All right, so we talked about using a table uh, to make our amino acids, right? But your body doesn't use a table, okay? It, that's, that's not how it does it. Uh, your body uses, uh, it, it, like it doesn't have a table and someone's there looking at three letters. That's how we do it to simplify what your body does. But what your body does is different, okay? And uh, in order to understand what your body does, you first need to understand the importance of reading frames. So, for example, let's pretend we started reading codons here. CGA, UAC, AGU, AGC. And we looked up each of those on the table. But your body, yourself, would just uh, would match uh, and make this amino acid string here. Arginine, tyrene, serine, serine. So these arge, tire, sir, sir. These are four amino acids, correct? And we did this just by taking these uh, triplet, then this triplet, then this triplet. That's the first reading frame. But the question is, well, what if that's not the reading frame we wanted to have? What if the reading frame we wanted to have was actually C, uh, G, A, U, A, C, A, G, U, A? Where you start matters. So when you look at this, here we started at the C, here we started at the G. This is why that start codon matters so much, because it tells you where to begin. And what it, how it does it is, let's pretend this was the whole sequence. It's going to look for AUG, CGA, no, right? And then it's going to go to the second letter, GAU, no, AUA, no, UA, no, ACA, no, CA, G, like that. And it goes... One at a time, it hits the next letter and it goes three, and then it hits the next letter and it goes three, it hits the next letter and it goes three, and hits the next letter and it goes three, and it keeps doing that until it finds AUG. Okay, if for some reason that AUG is not found, then that's not a protein it's going to make. That AUG is very, very important, and it won't start reading until that AUG is found. And changing the frame, right, the reading frame, the triplets, so that, like, if you were, let's say this is the correct reading frame. Let's say reading frame is correct. There's an AUG over here. We don't see it. Let's just pretend. And that this is the correct one. If you were to insert a letter, a, a nucleotide here, it would change this triplet and this triplet and this triplet and this triplet. And because it changed all those triplets, it would also change the amino acids they have. So you changed everything. If you were to add a letter or delete a letter for that matter, delete a nucleotide. So that's called a frame shift mutation because the reading frame has changed. And we'll see that more later on. So how does your body specifically do this, right? How does it actually get to uh, go from a codon, right? Let's say it finds the start. How does it actually go through this? Well, the first thing it does is uh, it needs to introduce a new player called the tRNA, a transfer RNA. And a transfer RNA is rather special. Transfer RNAs have an anticodon. That's a region that matches with the codon. So, for example, there's a tRNA out there somewhere, right, that matches with CGA. And you're like, oh, well, what would match with CGA? You already know what matches with CGA. It would be G. C U G C U would match C G A. So if the codon C G A, then the the base pair matching G C U would ma would match. So the anti codon here might be G C U. Let's just say every T R N A and every organism all over the planet with G C U has the same amino acid. It has arginine. So every GCU that exists on the planet, every organism from insects to anything you think of that has and makes proteins actually will have GCU here, will have arginine up here on the tRNA. The anticodon and the amino acid match. That's why it's so predictable. Okay, every GAU here, right, in the codon has a CU. A, C-U-A. So if I have a C-U-A here, let's say this is a C-U-A anticodon, 
right, which would match CUA here, every one of these CAU would have an ASP, would have the ASP amino acid up here. And it, it's very, every organism on the entire planet, it's very, very specific. So this really sets us up for a good specific kind of way of looking at this. And this is what the tRNA brings is this consistency of an anticodon that matches the codon and an amino acid that's attached to the anticodon that is the same every time and every organism all over the earth. And that's the end of, of part two for section five. We'll keep going with section five on our next video.